So this is Stellaris. It is a 4x strategy game set in space. Quite complex, and while I am quite picky when it comes to 4x strategy games, I do like Stellaris quite a bit. Which is why, when I got it last year, I thought to myself, wow, wow, wonder if I can play as the best species! And of course I can't, because that is the intellectual property of Digital Extremes, but thankfully, since Stellaris is made by Paradox Interactive, there is a lot of modding options, so if there is something missing from the game you would like to have, you are welcome to go ahead and just create it yourself. That is how I come to be making the Corpus species portraits that don't look at the civics and uh, ethics and traits. I don't play Stellaris online, I don't know what the meta is, I, I can tell you it really isn't this. I do play on the Grand Admiral, which is the hardest single-player difficulty, and I can tell you, like, these things don't matter that much, it's more about the general playstyle you adopt, but um, this is just some sort of a semi-lore-friendly thing I use when I play with it. We'll just look at what is present. Mainly not much, just the uh, corpus, portraits, species, populations, appearance options. Mm -hmm. There is not much more than that, there is a name list, no localization done, so there's just these temporary names. There are a few flag elements, but I will have to work on these as well. The colors are a little bit off if you compare them to the uh, base game ones. So mostly just the ruler stuff. I don't know if I will be adding anything else in the future. Ship appearance would be great, but I cannot 3D model for shit, so that's not happening. Maybe something like advisor voice, but I'm I don't really know if people use that or if they would like that, so who knows. City appearance definitely though. So that's at least something. There is a reasonable amount of clothing and appearance options for the rulers and populations. Co in comparison, the human species, which is probably the most diverse, has like 180 something files. The Corpus mod so far has like 450, so it is a little bigger. Yeah, okay, so this is a game I started to show off the mod. I maybe wanted to develop it a little bit more, but unfortunately the opposing empires didn't like that idea at all. The reason I have these strange like ethics and civics on this species is because I want to be able to adapt to different situations. So, if the galaxy is nice, and there are nice people around, I start trading and building up capital. And if it's not quite that, the corpus turn into like warmonger slavers. Unfortunately, in this galaxy, there is literally like nobody that likes me, except these guys, but they are really far away, so that doesn't help at all. This is a devouring swarm that I made, that I put in every game because it's fun, and this is a devouring swarm that decided to eat me. And they are doing that fairly successfully. I have held like the initial wave of the attack with fairly costly losses and now they are sort of going to fuck everything up and that is probably going to be the end of the Corpus Guilds in this particular galaxy, but never mind, I can still show off things. Now the, uh, I know it's complimenting myself, but sort of a neat feature I have is that the populations and even leaders are sort of color coded. There is of course, yeah. One of the redeeming things is that I managed to spawn right next to the solar system, with Earth and everything and humans, which I uh, used to um, extract for extra workforce. Um, it, the planet is still recovering, I used to do that in cycles, but well, not so much anymore, because the end is nigh. But besides the human populations, there is the enslaved... Uh, Indebted corpus, there is no slavery, just depths, which are the basic like crewmen with a little bit of uh, variety in the outfit, but not really anything at all. Normal, not indebted populations have different colors depending on the ethic they actually have. So the authoritarians are orange. The basic science corpus goes to the materialists naturally. Yellow is egalitarian. And then we have some others, yeah, green are xenophiles, they can spawn with or without the helmets. I think there is like a 6 to 8 chance for them to have a helmet. Uh, red are militarist, 
and maybe I have something else as well? Probably not. I do have a few colonies, but there's probably nothing different there either. The spiritualist portraits are actually pretty interesting, but I don't really have any of these populations here. Speaking of, uh, I could probably show that off. Wait a moment. Yeah, since Warframe is a home shooter focused on farming and grinding, there is not that much like background information about the different factions and stuff. So I think like this one is in Warframe, or like this one. That's from the Eximus helmets, I think. And then these like facial tattoos are from Warframe. Maybe like this one as well from Nef Anio. But the rest, while they are inspired from Warframe, I actually had to create myself just for the purposes of the mod. I think it's good when you are writing or making stuff like this to have some internal logic that drives it forward. It's It really helps with stuff. The spiritualists, as I was saying, are like purple and they have these drastically different like symbols and stuff used for them. So it, it, it does have like some meaningful context even if it's not really explained at all in the mod. The leaders are also color-coded, sort of, well, except for the current ruler, that is the one I made in the, like, faction or species creation setup. They don't look like this normally. Governors are actually, like, yellow or white in appearance, sort of like this. Uh, if we recruit some other ones, you can see sort of the di diversity. These mostly have helmets, this is a really fancy helmet, some of them are bald, some of them have just hats. It depends. They unfortunately don't have any of the basic corpus helmets like you would see on the generic populations like this. That is a limitation I needed to apply because if you need to actually animate the species portraits you need to use Maya, which is really fucking pricey and <laughs> there is no way I'm buying that just to make a really bad mod. So all of these things are taken from the human species, so the animations are basically identical. And the reason that the leaders don't have these helmets is basically because um, clothing looks like this. It has the lower part of the helmet on the clothing piece and the helmet itself is like a hat or hair accessory option. Uh, let's see, okay, yeah, this is a spiritualist one. So you have this helmet like this and it fits together if you use the, well, a clothing piece with the helmet base. It looks sort of okay, you know, like, uh-uh-uh. It's not really up to scale, but uh, in the game it looks something like this, I don't know, roughly. It looks like a normal corpus crewman, sort of, basically. Like, you know, it looks okay. But since leaders have different clothing options to sort of signify they are important and unique and shit, it really doesn't fit because they don't have the helmet bases. There you go, and this is, I think, like an admiral clothing piece, so if you were to combine that, it wouldn't look really that great. It would look something like this and it doesn't really fit. There are some of these clothing options with the base of the helmet used for leaders but not the tops because they couldn't match at all times. I think, uh, well not him, he is pre-made but if we look at the scientists they sometimes have the base of it. These scientists don't really look that great, the like default ones I got at the start. Some of them can look cooler, probably not the ones I have. Yeah, it's sort of like... Corpus females with bald heads look a little bit odd, I have to say. But yeah, these scientists look really sort of okay. If we look at the recruit, yeah... Uh, they look sort of sciencey, I guess. Yeah, looks fair. So yeah, um, governors are sort of yellow and white, scientists of course blue-ish, and generals, generals, I don't have any generals because I didn't anticipate ground combat and probably there is going to be none, but they are sort of green and red. Uh, oh yeah, um, I have abducted, uh, I'm not abducted, I have enlisted a lot of humans into the service of the Corpus Guilds, so they are appearing as valid options for generals, but Corpus General looks like this, they are sort of, you know, dark and red and maybe with a little bit of green if you like look real closely. 
Admirals have similar clothing options because, you know, it's still military, but they are red and red or red and black. No green there. I do have two admirals. They are fighting the losing battle against the swarms. Uh, nope, didn't want to click that. Ah, uh, there we go. There is one you can see they are sort of red and red. And I think the other one is Admiral Trashcan. Yeah. These are the helmets taken from combats and scrambuses, and they look a little bit ridiculous, but you know, it's corpus, it's cool. So yeah, that is more or less it. Let's just see this extreme space rave. So there are still things to make, but when it is eventually done, I will release this on the Steam Workshop so you can actually like use it. I was thinking of making some grenier, just basic, but maybe like 20 textures total to play against, but well, I, I will see how that goes. This is the chunkier, meatier main focus of my extreme modding efforts right now. Oh boy, it is still Stellaris and it is still modding. This is just a small update to the Corpus Stellaris mod I made a video about earlier, much longer video than necessary, but still. And, well, now I'm here again after making some small additions. I don't work on it consistently, I just add something when I feel like it. And I, I want to gather some feedback and steal some ideas, maybe. So last time I showed off the Corpus. Now, because the Corpus are a beacon of hope and cool shit, I added their polar opposite, the Grenier. Well, these are work in progress, there is not that much to see, but what I have done so far is just the basic, like, let's adapt the Grenier faces on the Stellaris sort of humanoid frames. So now I just will be adding clothing textures and things like that, so it will be easier. Uh, maybe it will open <laughs> in a bit. The first attempts weren't very stellar, if you will, but eventually I managed to get it working and look sort of decent. I don't think this is... Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, this is what I call Grook. It's a generic sort of Grunia Lancer. It is made on the... Uh, oh, let's see... It is applied on top of this, like, orc template, which I think is pretty fitting. Like, Grunia are sort of like space orcs, only humanoid and cloned, and much worse. Now, uh, back to that. This is interesting. There are not only Space Orc Grenier, there are also different body types. This is a Butcher, they are like similar humanoid, I don't know, like 2 meters-ish to the other races, like you would have humans or corpus or something like that. But there is also the big sort of chunky Grenier, which is applied on the bigger humanoid template thing. These would be the Lancers, Bombards and what have you. So we actually have some size difference between the different phenotypes, which I think is neat. You know, there's variety in the race. There is not much done again. The Butcher doesn't have anything else but this. The big guy, I don't know, I think this is a Lancer. I think I call it a Lancer. Is sort of like, has a few facial differences. Where the theme with the Corpus was, well, they have no hair, so they stylize themselves with like facial tattoos and stuff. The Grenier are differentiated by facial damage and terrible skin problems, so they sort of look like this. They also have like a few helmets. The helmets are weird. Let's look at that. Now, because this template type doesn't have any hair selectors, so they are not actually positioned on it, and I can't do that because, again, I'm not buying Maya because of this. They actually, this is the base sort of skin, and if you look really closely, you can see him sort of blinking. I cannot really do anything about that, unfortunately. I have thought about removing the full face, like covers or helmets, from this phenotype and only applying it to the smaller ones, but I am not so sure about that. Still, if the eyes were actually higher, I think I could show that. Hold up a second. It would look like this when it blinked. Blink, motherfucker. It doesn't actually look that bad, because it's very very thick. Uh, hold up. I, I, I thought I remembered it looking worse, but I guess not. Well, never mind. 
Still, the helmets on the Grenier are weird. Similarly, like the Corpus, they sort of have their helmets positioned where the sort of chin or mouth would be. The visor is like in that sort of spot. The Grenier have it under their eyes as well. That, however, is similarly in the game. If you look at this Grenier and maybe, maybe, like this guy, if you sort of compare the two, like this is a slightly different angle, but here we have a Grenier with a facial cover or a helmet, and here is another, okay, not that, here is another one who doesn't have that. Now we sort of try to really quickly position it in a similar manner. Uh, I don't know. This, this looks sort of fair. Then the eyes are actually above the helmet uh, holes as well. Which is like a problem Warframe has with everything, seemingly. The reason why the Stellaris mod helmets look a little bit odd like this is because they are actually not so wide as they are in the game, but unfortunately, again, that's sort of the restriction of how the um, uh, species portraits I used as a template works, so not much I can do with that. Ideally, it would look something like this, which is reasonably close to the default, but yeah, it is a little bit thinner, so it looks like, yeah, uh, still, it's I think it's manageable. Yeah, of course there are greener females as well. They look better than the prototype. Well, better being a relative word, but still. I think the animations stopped for some reason, but no matter. They also, this is the gunner, this is the big one. They also have a few variants. And there is also a scorpion work in progress. This one looks slightly worse. But yeah, it's going to be in the mod. There we go, the animations have resumed. So yeah, similar thing. Oh yeah, there is also like a very, very simple name list taken from the names used in the game, but it is, that is about it, there is nothing else. Well, there is Grook, but everything else is taken from the game. I will hopefully expand it in some meaningful manner, but for now it's just, yeah, it's just that. The thing, however, that is sort of done are the Corpus proxies. This is the Beeper Booper Empire. They are actually reasonably varied and reasonably polished already. They already have like a full name list, although it, it is not very complex, it is very creative. It is just a few like sort of computer-ish names with these sort of uh, six-digit nonsense things appended behind that. They are reasonably varied, as I said. This is the basic sort of MOA proxy without the gun. There are like, I think, five or six, six color variations for each type. And then the types vary a little bit. You may notice that the MOA is actually like a little bit stretched. It doesn't look like a regular MOA, it is a little bit taller. The regular MOA has sort of very long legs and then the core is rather short. Now, because again of the template I used, this MOA has sort of like shorter legs and much stretched out core. This, I think this is the mammalian robot type has been used as sort of the base, so it has to fit into it. And the core is sort of made up from two components, so it really needs to be like a little bit stretched out. I did try to toy with it, but there is no other way I found to work. It's cool though, like, it's, it's it's a very loose Warframe Stellaris mod. The Corpus are already off the rails. There is a lot different than in the base game. And I don't think that is necessarily a bad thing. Now, aside from the basic gunless mod type, you of course have the gun mod type. This is slightly modified with the Vapos variants. The chassis looks a little bit different, a little bit sharper. The colors are also a little bit more saturated. Then we have the Ambulance type more. This looks weird because normally, again, Ambulance looks differently, but because it has to fit, <laughs> this is like mini Ambulance. But I guess at least it adds some variety to the mod. 
it, it looks like it's dark and it has some like highlights that are colorful and well it's very stubby in the turret department but what can you do then we also have the fusion moa which is very cool that, that looks reasonable that looks like it, it looks decent and the bursa now that looks nothing like what is in the game these shields are so, sort of supposed to be on the sides of like little arms but again cannot fit that so bursa is sort of a completely different thing i did try to adapt the hyenas but i, I just couldn't fit it that was not successful in any way shape or form we also however have different phenotypes we have the ospreys this is a regular basic osprey there is also a raptor type these are spooky and also a locust drone or a nemes drone or i, I think it is actually used for one or two more entities none of which are particularly well known but this is actually like a corpus drone from the game partially why that is like one type is used in the cutscenes the other type is used in archwing none of which people particularly know in detail but yeah that is it so yeah this is probably not a corpus mod anymore it is just a generic warframe mod there are now the corpus which i think are mostly done the proxies which are also mostly done i will have to finish the textures on grenier and then actually try putting in some polished flag graphics cities and uh, room backgrounds in the ruler selection when that is done i will probably have to like rearrange a few things because to not have any mod conflicts or conflicts with future game versions you need to make a separate sort of species category and for that i will need to do even more localization which is going to take some time but if you have some suggestions or ideas or anything do po post in the comments hello person do you want to play Warframe, but are you also sick of playing Warframe so much? Oh, do I have the solution for you, as long as you own Stellaris. If you don't, well, this whole thing falls apart. But now, thanks to the power of me, you can play Warframe in Stellaris. Or at least, like, play Stellaris with Warframe faction species portraits, but no ships, because I can't 3D. There is a series of three mods now available that add Warframe species into Stellaris. The main mod includes four species, the Corpus, the Grenier, the Tenno and the Warframes. There are also name lists for each of the species, some ruler room backgrounds and Warframe themed flag symbols. The second mod adds the Corpus proxies, because Stellaris is made by Paradox and you need a shit ton of DLC to get additional features like machine races. The third mod requires both of the previous mods and adds prescripted empires for all five species with some additional fluff writing. But you don't have to play as that, just make your own thing using the assets. You can do different Corpus guilds like Luxor, Beacloud, Oklu not so much with non-corpus factions. You can sort of pretend to do still Meridian or something with the Grenier, but the color scheme is going to be off. That is one of possible future additions though. For now, the mods are available on the Steam Workshop and linked in the description of this video. If there is something wrong with any, let me know and I'll try to fix it. Emphasis on try. Well, hello there, children. <laughs> um, no, I did not suddenly become a sexual predator. I just happened to have the flu and I wanted to record a short video to show people how cool I sound when that happens. Although I do feel a little bit like shit. This is an update to the Stellaris Warframe mod because these are no longer provided on the main channel. I don't think they were ever provided on the main channel, that was like a uh, notice. Um, this is out, and that was it. But updates were always here, I guess. The last video I made about it here was like, I think I had Grenier really roughly in progress, and I said that the next video I want to publish is when the mod is complete. And of course, before that happened, I added a lot of unnecessary new shit other than the Grenier. I uploaded the mod with the Corpus, the Grenier, 
the Tenno and the Warframes. Uh, the main mod at least, there was also like a side mod for the Synthetic Dawn with uh, Corpus Proxies, but the main mod now also has the parent sequence, which is like really, really questionable Corpus, and the Steel Meridian, which is actually sort of Patagonia. I know that sounds paradoxical, but it's true. They are not so interesting, but in case you need more factions in your games or wanted to play these specific syndicates, now you can. They are not included as new empires in the prescripted countries because, well, I don't want to get it too bloated, like, it would eventually be maybe 10 empires and yeah, that would be too much. But we are also working on cephalons and Either they will look like really shitty floating cubes, or actually sort of inspired, but, well, both is sort of okay, because it's better than nothing, I suppose. I am also slowly working on the Orokin, but nah, not quite ready yet. They are blue, That's, I think that's what the Orokin are famous for. I don't even actually know if they are blue, like this palace, I guess. And there's the teaser for the very paradox that has a blue person, so I guess they are blue, but you know digital X screens, they can change anything on the whim, even if it conflicts with the already established lore. So maybe they are not blue at all, we'll see. But the Orokin and the Warframe mod are going to be blue, because blue is, for some reason, the objectively alien color. I don't know what it's with aliens, but sci-fi aliens tend to often be blue. I never understood that. Why, why not like a green with like really bright purple stripes? Look at that. Holy shit. That's, that's really arousing. But what, what is it blue? I think that blue is like the most neutral, non-offensive color most people can appreciate. A lot of cool things are blue like, I, I don't know, Earth, the United Nations. Um, jeans. So a lot of people like blue, but you know, it's. I don't think that's a good choice for an alien design because blue is really comforting to the human eye. It's what people like. It's what we are used to. It's like a really cool color, but fuck, fuck it. It's it's aliens. It's not supposed to be comforting. Just add like alien-looking spines and holes and protrusions everywhere, make it latex-looking, and add an inner mouth. Yeah, wow, fucking Giger knew he was onto something. Like that—that that looks alien. What the fuck is this? Well, although, like, uh, I digress. I suppose the Orokin are not supposed to be alien, so it makes sense. Yes, that is the video. I know, I know, there was a video on this before, but now it's gone, and besides, this is like a definitive edition of the mods. It's a completely different thing, guys! Trust me, would I ever lie to you today? Basically, Stellaris is a sci-fi 4x strategy game where you try to expand your species into a galactic empire. What the mods I made do is let you play as various Warframe factions. Which is completely redundant if you don't play Stellaris, but I don't know. If it looks cool, maybe pick it up when it's on a sale. It's pretty good for the quarantine, I find. Originally, the mods included the Corpus, the Grenier, the Tenno, the Warframes and the Corpus Proxies. But the super cool Definitive Edition 1 contains the slightly less repulsive Grenier. The much worse Corpus, the Orokin, because every sci-fi setting needs its obligatory blue alien, the Infestation, the Sentient, and the Cephalons, somehow. Some of the portraits are faithful to the source material, but a lot of it is made as a bit of a stretch. The Orokin are all Balas's cousins, the Cephalons look pretty bad, the Tenno are more in breadth than usual, and the Sentient, well... I had only the Battalist scanned, so there's something resembling a Battalist, and then... I don't know what these are, but they are sentient, just trust me on that. The mods also include many flag symbols, so you can get creative and set up your own special little factions, 
or, alternatively, use this optional thing which provides more or less lore-friendly preset factions with some questionable fluff. There's more stuff like name lists, sounds, backgrounds, and an FBI backdoor virus, but the bottom line is Warframe in Stellaris. There may be some smaller future additions to make it the definitively definitive edition, but I think it is mostly complete now. If you want, you can find the Steam Workshop links in the description below. Hey, I'm still messing around Stellaris and Stellaris modding. Stellaris is a 4x strategy game, it doesn't matter very much. I was considering to make some sort of a short Let's Play edited series on the main channel of Stellaris, and that will probably turn out to be a very bad idea indeed, after looking at the Matrix, but I will try that out, probably. And so I reinstalled the game and looked back at the mod files and found some unfinished stuff, so I went back and kind of finished it and uploaded them to the workshop. Uh, some new stuff that I'm going to be previewing. Now, okay, not this unfinished mod stuff, these don't look at them, I will probably not really finish them, maybe. Actually, uh, if the quarantine gets worse, it's going to be winter, the pubs may be restricted, spores, indoor places may be restricted, if that happens I will have a lot of free time, I might finish them. But for now, just the Warframe mods. The two biggest, most noticeable additions are of course the Ostrons, which are a mistake of nature. This looks fine, the backgrounds are actually not bad, I quite like them, but the Ostrons are awful. I. I don't know, I think I will have to go back and fix some of the textures, because while this guy looks okay, if you kind of try cycling the clothes, this starts to be questionable, and these are god-awful, and the hats are... well, I don't like it, let's just put it that way. Uh, I, th I guess we'll preview them in-game, just to see how they generally look like, some diversity of the portraits that can be generated. Ostrons are not very diverse. They have some skin tones, more than in the game, in Warframe I mean. They have more clothing options than in Warframe, but they still are not like very interesting. This is kind of what can be generated. These are the scientists. If we take a look at the population, I think that should be using the same portraits, just everything thrown together, randomly generated. They are kind of unremarkable, and they don't look very good. The colors are kind of mismatched because they have different colors of the hats and the clothing. Um, I guess they can be nice, they can spawn in as another empire, or you can make a custom design, and they will be in the game, so you can like totally obliterate them. But I don't think many people will be playing as the Ostrons, they are not really very remarkable. Still, they are kind of there, and they have their own name list, which is kind of nice, I think. The name lists are an interesting part of the modding process. I try to kind of capture different aspects of the factions so that it is reflected in the uh, name list. So, you know, they kind of have something that would resemble. Oh, no, I, I got spooked by something. They kind of a name. <laughs> I thought something was broken. They kind of have names that would reflect the kind of names that are in the game, so there's like Konzu, Saya, there is Hawk and Pedlek, and they kind of have names that are like that, you know. Morna, Hadula, Baroka, Neka, Gulna, you know, that should be like similar to the general style. So these are the Ostrons, uh, not my finest moment, let's be honest. The Solaris, FUCKING SOLARIS, somehow look much better. <laughs> About fucking Slars, I'm joking because of the Deadlock Protocol video. I got really upset with them for some reason. But yeah, Slars are actually kind of good looking, surprisingly. They also have their own uh, name list. So, all of them, I think, maybe there's some ones that don't, but most, if not all, have this sort of naming pattern, like a weird word, usually short, two letters or one, okay, a letter or two letters and a number. I think that also follows the in-game convention. The business kind of has a nickname, the ticker has kind of a nickname, Yudiko has a nickname, 
but even Yuriko has like a Solaris name, it's something like FB9, I think, which probably stands for Floor Boss. Let me check that actually. Yeah, Yuriko FB9. So I would assume that the Solaris naming convention follows this rule like a name or a word and some letters and a number. So that's what they kind of look like in the game, and the portraits are kind of decent. They are, again, not very diverse, because the Solaris are not really very diverse either. But there are some colors, there are some like uh, body and head options. For the Solaris there are no differences between male and female uh, models, if you can call it that. Because I don't think that's even the case in game, and second, I'm kind of lazy, so... They look the same, there is no difference. There might be a difference in the name, I don't remember that. But maybe not, actually. Yeah, so apparently there is not even a difference in the name for Gen... <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I said, I I'm kinda lazy. <laughs> I, I just pasted this and inserted this in as first names female, so that's great. Um, yeah, that's the Solaris, they look kind of cool. They can come in as a mismatched variant, which is a different kind of head color and body color, which I think is kind of nice. I, I don't know, I kind of like that, because it adds in at least some... I don't like using the word diversity, because it's like in every sentence. Is there any synonym? Variety. It adds some variety to it. You know, like this, probably. Uh, that might not be mismatched. I don't know. Half of the population should be mismatched like this, but seems to be a... okay, these are... So they have different colors of the head and the body, but other models, especially for the leaders, are kind of matching. I think there's like six, seven, eight-ish variants, so that's cool. So that's actually the meat of it. Uh, yeah, they also boost the navies. Okay, cool name. The name lists are also like planets and ships, didn't really go over that, but I think that should be kind of obvious if you did play Stellaris before. Now that is kind of it, that's the most things in this update of the mods, I don't think I will be edit adding anything else that is substantial to them. There are some smaller updates. Now, unfortunately, what you may need to do if you have some user-generated empire designs is go in and change their flag symbols. This is going to happen, probably, because I actually don't know why. I did ask about it, and they told me that they just removed scroll bars from the uh, flag symbols in vanilla version. There is a mod that you can use to extend it, that kind of adds them back, I think, but most people won't do that, so the flag symbols are kind of limited to what? Uh, 24. So I had to split them to Warframe A and Warframe B, and if you were using one of the flag symbols that was moved, you will need to reselect it. And Well, that's, that's all there is to the fix, but I guess it is kind of annoying. This unfortunately means the absence of the scroll bar that all the mods, like this one I downloaded, which have more than 24 flag symbols, are kinda fucked. Which is unfortunate, but there you go. Paradox. Interactive. Mm. But yeah, there are some new flag symbols, like I guess this is new. Uh, I don't actually remember which is new and which is not. There are some old flag symbols I will probably need to update still because they look kind of bad. This, I'm not sure why, it, it is very sharp and unpleasant to look at. Uh, but kind of most of them are pretty good, I think. Yeah, you also have the recent planes... The, the, oh no, not the planes. Heart of Dimos. I jumped ahead quite a bit on that one, but the new Dimos uh, flag symbols, this, uh, I don't know how it's called. It's for the Necromex, but I don't know what the uh, syndicate is. I think like Necroloid, I don't know what that means, why it's named strangely like that. There is also the Entrati family symbol and all fun things. Kind of a moon sun thing for the Tano, it also looks kind of sharp and bad, but whatever. One more addition that is kind of bigger, I guess, and not very apparent, I think it is actually. 
Yeah, I think I added that. Never mind. Um, I am going to look at that momentarily. But now, uh, yeah, normally the cephalons would have Tenno in as a cyborg species. But if you select the corpus as a cyborg species, I'm doing that because there is probably a way to do that through the console to add a cybernetic trait to the entire species. But if you do, or if somehow through, an, through another mod or through an ascension perk, or if you start with it as an origin, if you have the corpus and they have the cybernetic trait, they are actually going to be spoopy robots now. Um, look at that. And that's mostly the saffrons, but look at that, that's a spoopy robot, you know? That's, it's also a spoopy robot. They are spoopy robots now. How did that happen? Well, I thought that is the only way I can show it, but now I actually remember that like last minute... Oh no, let's not do that, let's just copy this so I don't have to set everything... Oh. Copy that so I don't have to set everything up. Last minute I in fact added the spoopy corpus as a... Not, not that, as a machine race. So you can play as them, as spoopy robots. Oh, uh, let's just kind of set that up, get rid of these traits, and if we launch the game, they are going to be spooper robots. Not this one, obviously, but if you look at the researchers, they're not very interesting. This is a very bad <laughs> selection that looks kind of similar, but they should be pretty colorful. Maybe not the researchers. Governors, you know, uh, yeah, they are a little bit samey, aren't they? That's weird. They have less diversity than the normal corpus models, but they still should be like reasonable, reasonably different. Mm. Not making a good case for that, but just believe me, right? Maybe if you look at population, e yeah, yeah, the population is even less varied than the leaders. But I think it's cool. It's, it's not me meant to be like a main thing. I apparently added it into the machine races, so I guess you can play as that, but this happens when you give them the cybernetic trait in the middle of the game. So yeah, I was thinking of doing that for the Greenie as well, but the Greenie have like a... I, I kind of did it differently, and they have a lot of textures. So, you know, I... I don't want to <laughs> say I will do it. I might do that. But they are kind of problematic, and the file size on the mod would just bloat again, and I don't like doing that, because these mods have a lot of unnecessary textures for the species already. If you look at the corpus, uh, they kind of have... Uh, well, no, her style. Three phenotypes, three color variants each, that's nine per sex, so that's 18 per the portraits, and that's 18 to be made into cyborgs. The Grenier unfortunately work differently because... Okay, I could have stayed there. Because I actually opted to make these bigger boys and smaller boys. So they have kind of like these big ones and... Oh, you cannot actually select those other ones as rulers. Eh, uh, that's probably fine. But these big sort of, I guess, Lancer and Heavy Gunner for the females variants, they don't use the standard... Oh, I'm getting... This is probably really, really unimportant. Doesn't really matter. But since I already started on it... Um, I think I mentioned this before in other videos a lot, but I'm kind of using the vanilla meshes, the... I don't know if it was Paradox. The developers of Stellaris made. So, and I cannot really make new ones, because it is only creatable in Maya for some reason, and Maya is a gigantic pain in the ass and expensive as shit, and I'm definitely not doing that. But, uh, these are kind of applied over the standard human-like portraits. So, there is 18 of these basic ones, and 18 of these uh, cyborg ones, I suppose, robot ones, spoopy robot ones, and then clothing and hats are applied on top of that separately. This is not the case for most of the Grenier. If you look at the mod files, the Grenier kinda have the hats applied on top of the texture for the body, because that's used with the mesh, because these bigger bodies, 
don't actually have separate helmets or hats layer. It's, it's just the way Stellaris works, and because I cannot really make these meshes myself, that's what I had to do. And there is like how many? Um, there is 62 separate textures that I would well maybe not 62. Ever each of these has like two that are fully covered, so this would be okay. Uh, let's say maybe like 40 textures that would need to be changed in order for it to be spoopy robots. I don't know if that is... how big is that? Uh, I don't know if that is something I want to do. That's 12 megabytes. That doesn't sound big, but like for the mod it's 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 kind of big already. Uh, the mod is like... yeah, that's like 235 megabytes. And that's only the organic portraits. That's... wow. Not an efficient use of space on the disk. But yeah, the Grenier have basically two variants. And the smaller ones, like this, the pack here, are okay. These ones would be a little problematic. So I'm not sure that is going to happen, but that is mostly it. That is the additions. There are some other fixes and smaller things that I don't really honestly even remember. And... I don't think I have anything else to say about it. The Solaris and Ostrons are not added in the pre-scripted countries because I didn't want to make any more of them. I think 8 is kind of a big number and I don't really want to fill your sidebar of empires with these things. Because you cannot actually delete the ones that the mods add, which is interesting. But I guess that kind of makes sense. So these are still the same old, and if you want to make a Solaris or a Stone Empire, you will just have to go to create new and select them here. I think that's kind of it, so uh, yeah. Um, still doing this thing, for some reason.